the state that put him on the path to the White House in 2008. News Channel 5's Mike Bush is in the town of Piasta, Iowa tonight. He was the only St. Louis television reporter invited to go one-on-one -on -one with the president today. Mike? Okay, President Obama says he will have a jobs plan for Congress when they get back to work in September. The question is whether that jobs plan can become a bill that can pass because there has not been very much compromise in Washington. And that's exactly what the president was talking about today here in Iowa. The White House is calling this bus tour a listening tour, but it had the feel of a campaign stop. Hello, hello, hello. At his rural summit here in Piasta, Iowa, he tried to convince Iowans he shares their frustration. His message was similar for people from Missouri and Illinois in our one-on-one -on -one interview. But what it requires is a willingness to act in the interests of uh, the country and, and, and instead of just scoring political points. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to just keep on pounding away at it until uh, we finally get a breakthrough in Congress. This swing through the Midwest comes at a time when the president is at a low point in popularity. Even his own party has been critical. And, and so what do you say to those people on the left who say you're too willing to compromise? Right. Well, the, uh, you know, one of the things about being president is, is that uh, uh, you, usually there's, there's somebody who's unhappy with you at any given moment in time. Uh, but uh, I think the majority of people, regardless of party affiliation, they just want us to put country before party. They want us to put uh, the next generation ahead of the next election. The recent roller coaster ride on Wall Street and the stubborn unemployment rate have many Americans pessimistic about the economy. And there may be no one more frustrated than small business owners who can't get credit. There's more work we can do on credit. Uh, the, the biggest challenge facing small business owners, in addition to credit, though, is just uh, needing more consumers out there. So that's why if we pass a small business uh, or if we pass a, a payroll tax cut, extending it into next year, well, that's about a thousand bucks in the pockets of ordinary Americans, and they can spend it at that local uh, small business. It may not have been an official campaign stop. Let's get to work. Thank you very much. But the president seems to have rolled out a new campaign theme, pointing the finger at Congress and trying to get voters to do the same. My message to them is I'm enlisting them in the fight to tell their members of Congress to start compromising. And the president repeated his mantra today that there's nothing wrong with this country. There's just something wrong with this country's politics. Now, the president has been taking his lumps on this trip. And with more on that, we want to bring in News Channel 5's Mike Rush. Mike. Well, Mike, I saw the headline in the newspaper. A very interesting twist. And we did see some protesters along the route as we drove in here this morning. There were protesting some of the policies of the president. Yeah. All right, Mike, thanks very much. Meantime, Republican presidential candidate Governor Rick Perry of Texas was just a few miles away in Dubuque, Iowa. Mitt Romney, meantime, was in New Hampshire, and Michelle Bachman was in South Carolina, and they too were talking about jobs. You know, Mr. President, you've tried now for two and a half years of government creating jobs. I spent 25 years in business, and, uh, and in that process, I was part of helping create jobs. I'd like to do that for the nation. Let's all say happy birthday to Elvis Presley today. Happy birthday. Michelle Bachman joked her job's plan is to replace President Obama, and she noted the date, and she's now being criticized because today is not Elvis's birthday. He died on this date. Well, it's only August, but every cycle for a presidential election seems to be starting earlier and earlier. KSDK political analyst Dave Robertson explains why. This time it's Republicans who are vying for an open nomination. There's no clear front runner at this point, so everybody wants to get in there and jockey for position as early as they possibly can and to win attention as early as they can. Organizations have reinforced that by creating a whole set of debates that are going to be held in the month of September. The president heads to Illinois tomorrow. He'll finish his trip in Peoria. But with the campaign season clearly underway, it won't be long till he's out on the road again. Okay? All right. Thank you so much, Mike. Wounded Marine Corporal Justin McLeod is home tonight for the first time in a year and a half. He rode home in a limousine escorted by the Patriot Guard after getting a hero's welcome at Lambert Airport. Terminal 2 at Lambert Airport is home to Southwest Airlines. Go Marines! Woo! On Tuesday, it was also home of the Brave. 
Flight 2122 from San Diego was carrying precious cargo. And shortly after 12.30 in the afternoon, Marine Corporal Justin McLeod came through gate 14 to a spontaneous standing ovation. Corporal McLeod is from Cedar Hill, Missouri, and this is his first time home since being wounded in Afghanistan. Push up a little bit. We were in San Diego to watch him on his new battlefield. After losing his legs and an arm to a roadside bomb, he is fighting to walk again with the same courage he showed in Afghanistan. Home at last, going into the terminal, the corporal expected to see his family. He didn't expect this. Hundreds showed up to pay their respects. It's actually kind of overwhelming, I man. I didn't really expect this many people, but it feels good. It's awesome to see everybody, you know, so willing to greet him and, and welcome him home. Thank you, Justin. Hey. Oh, sir. Yes. From old friends to strangers. For me, it's an honor and a pleasure, sir. From veterans to active military, it was a celebration of the people, by the people, and for an American hero. I've been so worried about him. It's hard to talk right now. I am so happy. So. And this is such a small token to show our appreciation. The 23 year old will spend the next few weeks getting reacquainted with friends and family. So he's got a lot of catching up to do. Yeah. A lot of family to see and uh, a lot of friends to hang out with and a lot of reminiscing, I'm sure. Spend time with family and friends. You know, I got a lot to catch up with. I've been around him for a while. But first, a ride home in a stretch limousine and an escort by a line of police and Patriot Guard that seemed to stretch a mile. St. Louisans are well known for wearing cardinal red. But on this day, the area's colors were clearly red, white, and blue. Corporal McLeod played baseball in high school, and tomorrow night he'll be a guest of honor at Bush Stadium as he throws out the first pitch before the Cardinals game. You can see behind me, workers continue to work on the concourse. Concourse C is completely closed, but there is news on this front, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. Teams with the National Weather Service are assessing the damage throughout the area, but here's what we know for sure. The first reports of damage came in just before 7 p.m. on Friday in the form of large hail in Warrington and Montgomery County. The storm then moved to St. Charles County, where at least 20 homes were damaged in New Melly and Forestell. At this point, the storm was traveling kind of hit and miss, causing damage in Weldon Spring and Darden Prairie. It then headed down Interstate 70 and 270, cutting a path through Maryland Heights and Bridgeton before heading to Lambert St. Louis International Airport. The path of damage continued through Berkeley, Ferguson, and Delwood before heading into Illinois where there is widespread destruction in Pontoon Beach, Granite City, and Bond County. Now, I mentioned that Lambert St. Louis International Airport is closed at this hour, but the big news today, the Missouri Governor Jay Nixon had a press conference just moments ago, and it was announced at that news conference that Lambert will be accepting a few flights coming in, not going out, inbound flights tonight, and then they hope to be operational up to 70% tomorrow with more on what's going on here at Lambert let's bring in News Channel 5's Talia Kaplan path of destruction at least nine people were killed hundreds of others injured as tornadoes swept across the Midwest overnight from Kansas to Kentucky crews spent today searching for survivors the worst hit Southern Illinois I am Mike Bush in Harrisburg Illinois about 130 miles southeast of St. Louis and we are in an area, the Walmart parking lot in Harrisburg, which was hit hard by this EF4 tornado that killed six people. Now, the Walmart, you can't see it, is behind the camera. It was heavily damaged, but nothing like this strip mall behind me where a cash store, a sporting goods store, and a game store were all completely destroyed. Now, here's a look at the death toll across Missouri and Illinois. Going west to east, there is also one dead in Cassville, Buffalo, and Puxico, then across the Mississippi. Again, six here in Harrisburg, Illinois. That's four women and two men. We have live team coverage tonight of the tornadoes that hit during what's supposed to be winter. There's supposed to be snow on the ground and not funnels in the sky. 
Let's begin with Casey Nolan. Casey? That's right, Mike. Those trying to survive this storm had a couple of things working against them, both nothing more than a pillow to protect them. And we've been saying this storm had very bad timing coming in overnight while people were asleep. On the other hand, if you look behind us, if these people had been in business Absolutely. and in these buildings when this tornado hit, it could have been very devastating. Exactly. The timing kept some people safe as well. Right. All right, Casey, thanks very much. Now, there was a curfew tonight in those devastated areas from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. They're trying to keep out gawkers and sightseers and especially looters. But it was not effective for everybody. News Channel 5's Courtney Guzman reports. Melissa Dowdy is, will be prosecuted to the fullest extent. And one of the first places the police went to was right here because behind us is a cash store mm. that was completely destroyed. All right. Okay. Thanks very much, Courtney. Well, it's been a terrible day, obviously, for the residents here in Harrisburg, and no one has been busier than the mayor of Harrisburg. And Eric Gregg told me earlier today what he witnessed as the storm came in. You know, unfortunately, this morning when I heard the sirens going off and I came outside to uh, to see what was going on. Most schools these days are judged by student test scores, but there's one St. Louis school that has to be judged by a different standard. As you're about to find out in tonight's Making a Difference report, many of these students may be behind, but at least they're not behind bars. All right. In the juvenile division of St. Louis Family Court, Judge Jimmy Edwards rules not with a heavy hand, but a heavy heart. And these are kids that are committing offenses at 11 and 12 years old. That the records show that the juvenile is present. When you've been a judge for almost two decades, you get a pretty good idea of how these kids end up in his courtroom. Carrying a concealed weapon, a class D felony. There are three pathways to criminality. If there is a lack of adult supervision, too much idle time, and economic constraints. Jimmy Edwards knows all about those pathways. A product of the failed urban housing project, Pruitt Igo, he says it was his mother's example that kept him out of trouble. She made sure that we understood how important it was to help each other and how important it was to help others. With that example and with hard work, Edwards went from the streets of St. Louis to the halls of St. Louis University Law School. You knew Jimmy was going to be something. You know, he was going to be successful. But he always had this vision. We'd be getting ready to go out and get some drinks. He said, I'm not going. I'm going to be a judge. Your motion with respect to findings of fact will also be granted, Council. Seeing children break the law can sometimes break your heart. So Judge Edwards came up with the idea for St. Louis's first of its kind, second chance. People of great care to conduct themselves with dignity. Even in times of crisis or despair. Welcome to Innovative right. Concept Academy. I heard you guys talking about angles. A school for at-risk kids from 10 to 18 years old. We only take children that have committed type 1 type offenses, the most serious offenses that would require expulsion. In partnership with MERS Goodwill, St. Louis Public Schools, and the Juvenile Court, Judge Edwards opened the academy inside the shuttered Blewett Middle School in 2009. What's on the other end? C. The way he figured it, the public would be better off I want to prove if instead of learning how to load an assault weapon, these kids were learning about math, science, and history. I believe it is more important to modify children now as opposed to trying to manage the behavior later. Just a year ago, 17-year-old Dion Smith spent far less time in school than he did in trouble. Got caught mixed up in some bad stuff. Well, some marijuana, drugs and stuff like that. Four six things, you have to reduce it. But individual attention, enhanced security... And versus describe what? And the ever-present Judge Edwards... Is going to describe something. ...has helped steer Dion... Good and evil... ...and many of these kids in a new direction. And he's pouring his heart into it. He loves these kids. These are his kids. He's now going from the back end of incarceration to the front end of prevention. And that's what this whole school is about. So you want to go to college? Yes. If I asked you that five years ago, would you have said the same thing? Probably not. As far as the school's future is concerned, bigger and better is not the focus. See you later. For Judge Edwards, it's one day and one student at a time. And I say just simply give me an effort better today than you gave me yesterday, and I'll applaud. One veteran judge who believes when it comes to setting kids straight... Have you had a good day? Yeah. Really good day? There may be no better teacher okay, I'm proud of you. than a good example. Coming here every day makes me feel real good. 
Now you know more about the man who was just named a Hero of the Year by People magazine. That prize came with a $10,000 award, and the judge intends to use the funds for a new arts and drama program at the school.